Off the ball. This is News Talk. You're welcome back to Off the Ball Saturday here on News Talk. John Duggan with you through until five o'clock. Let's check in with Aaron Kernan at Breffney Park. Our man and Donegal batting the dash for a place in the Ulster Senior Football Final. And Aaron, Donegal almost out of sight. Yeah, they are indeed. Um, half time here. It was it's eerie with nobody about, but it's definitely eerie with the score lines there is at the moment. Um, uh, Donegal leading one twelve to Armas not three. Um, first fifteen minutes, I have to say, it was a very lively encounter. Um, both teams sort of mirroring each other on how they set up, uh, trying to keep two men in front of goals and good, trying to get good long early ball inside. Um, Armagh tried a, a couple of. Uh, to work a couple of goal chances whenever looking back now we might have been better if we had tapped a couple of balls over the bar um, so our three points at the moment are just three frees from Rain O'Neill no scores from play um, and Donegal particularly from, from the water break onwards uh, have just completely turned the screw here um, the, the first seven scores they got was uh, seven different players um, Michael Murphy hasn't even scored from him yet but at one stage, um, they had ended up with three marks in a row that resulted in three scores. Um, so obviously something that they have really worked on. Um, but a disappointing aspect from Armagh where they have a lot of men behind the ball, um, but no pressure um, in the middle third of the field, which is allowing the Donegal kick passes, particularly Ray and McHugh, deliver a good early ball to inside forwards, we say, taking the mark around the D and tapping it over the bar. So um, Donegal, without doubt, very, very impressive um, what we've seen towards the end of that first half. And um, Armagh have it all to do now in the second. And the wing-back, Pat Mogan, took a brilliant goal. He did. Now, he, he, he's named as a wing-back here, but he's actually started inside as corner forward. Right. Um, and he, he's, he's been really lively all day, so he has. He's causing serious issues with blind and pace um, and physicality um, Donegal are, are bossing it around the middle of the field and, and did again after the water break but the pace that, th that they're breaking at with Owen Bond Gallagher Ryan McHugh Pedder Mogan um, you know they have to say you know, all across the field they, they are very impressive looking very very assured and confident about, uh, about what uh, they're about uh, the wind it's a probably five six point wind advantage you know that, that's what you would expect but um t to see Donegal so far ahead here um you'd be talking two three goals probably needed from Armagh at this stage um to, to try and turn things around here and uh, to be fair Donegal I'd say are, are plotting and planning in there to make sure that they don't leave themselves exposed that they have plenty of cover um for any long direct early ball that comes in um and they'll be looking to deal with it uh, because without goals you really can't see Armagh kicking the points that's going to be needed to turn this game around yeah it seems to be over Aaron to be honest about it yeah t to be fair um that would be a, a good summing up of it. Uh, a 12-point lead for a Donegal team that are going for three Ulsters in a row. Um, you would find it very hard to believe that they would lose their composure or their focus to, to let a lead like this slip. OK, Aaron, we'll be back to you shortly. Aaron Kernan there at Breffney Park, where Donegal are 12 points up at Armagh at halftime. And just some other scores. The John McDonough Cup, round three. Antrim 3-7, carry five points at Cargan Park. That's the latest score. And the Ladies All-Ireland Senior Championship, um, Donegal 2-11, Waterford 3 points. And in the Camogie Championships uh, quarterfinals, it's Clare 8 points, Cork 1-10 at Porky Cueve. Uh, Hurling, Clare and Wexford just starting their Senior Championship qualifier at O'Moore Park in Port Leash. Four o'clock throw win for Cork and Tipperary in the qualifiers. Uh, Shane Dowling bringing us updates on that match from the Gaelic Grands. 6-15 then throw in for Kilkenny and Galway at Croke Park at the Leinster Senior Hurling Championship decider. So to join us to look ahead to that and the other hurling matches, including the Munster final tomorrow, uh, the Kilkenny forward uh, from the past, Aidan Taggy Fogarty, and the former Galway defender, Tony O'Gregan. Lads, good afternoon. How are you doing, John? How are you doing, John? Yeah, good, lads. Hope you're well. Um, in what's been a, a difficult uh, time for everybody. Um, Tony, we'll just start with you. Like, your performance psychology coach, Speaking to players, are they enjoying playing inter-county hurling during this uh, this strange situation we're all living in? I think it's given them a great motivation and a, and a structure to their week, and they've really enjoyed the aspect of meeting up with teammates, continuing to, I suppose, exercise, continuing to meet up as a group, and you know having the challenge every weekend of a, a championship match to prepare for. So. You know, it's been a welcome distraction, I think, and it's helped shorten the winter, not just for players, but I think supporters and people out there in the in the general public that we've, you know, games look forward to the weekend and it has helped with this longest lockdown, I suppose, that we've had so far this year. 
Are you involved directly with any kind of uh, psychology work uh, at the moment, Tony, or is it with any players in, in any sport? Uh, just on an individual basis, yeah. John, but I'm not involved in a, any inter-county team this year. I think it's the, the first year I haven't been involved in a senior inter-county team for probably close on 10 years. So uh, I've been kind of happy with the break. It's it's a fairly pressurised situation and it's just allowed me to look at a few other projects in my life at the moment. Absolutely. Taggy, what are you at at the moment? Have you given up the dancing boots? I've given up the dancing boots, John. Yeah, I made, a, I made enough of fool myself early on in the year, so I'm, I'm taking this winter off, thank God. But there's no dancing anyway, all social distancing, I'm afraid, so it's well knocked on the head. Absolutely, good man. And uh, from the lads you're speaking to in, in, in Kilkenny, Taggy, are they enjoying being back? Are they looking forward to this tonight? Are they up for a Leinster final just as much as they would be back in the days you were playing? Yeah, no, absolutely, yeah. And Tony kind of touched on it there. Everyone is just delighted to be out, to be able to train. And I think for the players... It's a bit of normality as well during the week, their training schedule, and then a match on, on, on the weekend. And it it kind of keeps them going. They're not being isolated. They're out and about. They're connecting with people. And they're as much fire in them as there is. And if anything, it's kind of a year that anywhere anyone can win the championship. And as well as so Kenny, I look at it like that as well. As get one game at a time, that's what Cody always says. And uh, they're going to be there, thereabouts. Anyone can win this championship. You're not really going on form. So it's all just turned into one big mix, and it's hell for letter. Yeah, Tony, like Galway are one county that Brian Cody sometimes has had an issue with, uh, as brilliant as his managerial career has been. 2001, we remember, 2005, the semi final, even 2012, the Leinster final. Now, most of the Kilkenny uh, wins, they've had more wins than Galway in, in the battles between the two counties. But I'm sure you remember some great battles against the Black and Amber. Oh, yeah, like they were, they were phenomenal matches. And like, I think Taggy's group there, you think you'd. Some of the best players, not just of the last generation, but I think over you know fifty or hundred years of the game. That you know when you look at all the players that won Player of the Year awards and, and the careers that they had, they were a phenomenal team to come up against. And you always knew that you had to be so well prepared going up against them because if you're off in your mentality by one or two percent, if you're off in your fitness by one or two percent, or you're off in your your tactical side of it by one or two percent. The really good Kilkenny teams could beat you by 15 or 20 points and they could turn the screw in a couple of moments and, and hit you for 2-3 two, or 2-4. Two, and you could be in the game for 60 minutes and the next thing you're walking out the gate after getting bet by 10 or 12 points. So, you know, you knew you were going to earn not only the result but every single ball. And it was so manly and so competitive and I just really enjoyed those battles. And there were great, great times to be a part of and, and great memories when we did sneak an odd victory or two. Taggy, did you ever mark uh, Tony or the other way around? Uh, no, I was always just kind of trying to run around him, really. But uh, no, I never actually man on man marked him. But uh, yeah, no, he was a fair detail. And he would have been one of the names that would have been actually turned around in the Kenny dressing room. You know, you'd be looking to who to mark out. Joe Cannon is that your, if your obvious one. But uh, Tony at centre back was uh, was excellent. I kind of dictated the game a lot of the time. But as Tony said, our battles with Galway, Galway were always a thorn in the side with Kenny. And any time we played Galway, league or championship, Brian Cody was always a different man. You know, he always was a different man than two weeks leading up to the matches because he knew Galway on their day could take down any team. And if you look at the, the, the past, any time that Galway did beat Kilkenny, it was on a large scoreline. So it was either Galway or it was either Kilkenny sneaking victories by two or three points or Galway, if they got a run on Kilkenny, could beat them by 10 or 11 points easily. And that's if Kilkenny were off the mark. We always said if we were 1% off and Galway were 1% better, they could absolutely clean us. And they did on lots of occasions. Like in 2005, they beat us. Broderick there, that famous um, flick over the centre-backs, heading over the bar, caught us in 2012 in the Leinster final, absolutely hammered us. And we took them to an All-Ireland draw and eventually came out winners because Henry Sheffield was one of the best players on the day. But it's just, if you give that Galway team enough of space and if you don't hit them from the off, they could absolutely clean you. Uh, when you say he was different, Taggy, was he more serious or more even on edge? Brian Cody we're talking about here? Yeah, no, he'd be more on edge. You know, Brian has a, has a knack of kind of, he'd be getting ready for teams, and I'm talking about maybe Leinster, Leinster first rounds and uh, semi-finals, that we'd be taking the game serious. But Brian would be talking a lot, lot more during the week when it's Galway. And he'd be talking to lads more, and he'd be more on edge he be more agitated, and there'd be more of a rawness to him. You know, there would be more of a rawness to him. And the fact, I think, you know, I think in 2013, um, Galway came into the Leinster Championship and uh, Dublin beat us in the semi-final and they're going to play in the Leinster final. 
he went into the dressing room and he said, look, the Bob O'Keefe Cup should be staying in Leinster. And this is just Brian Cody's thoughts and not to be given to, to a Galway team. That was his just mentality. That's, the, that, that's where he's coming from. So to be always a bite, in, a bite in the teeth with Brian Cody with Galway because he knew Galway could take Kilkenny down. Uh, Tony, in recent years, Galway have, of the last four meetings of the championship, won three of them and drawn another one. Have they, maybe in a psychological perspective or mentally feel now that they can stack up with Kilkenny and, and, and beat them? Like, the, the mindset of the players like going in tonight after that really impressive win over Wexford, they must be feeling very confident. I think so. Like, when you look back at the back-to-back -back Leinster wins there in 17 or 18, uh, and, uh, you know, most of the Kilkenny players were involved in those games, and Galway did have their card on it. But, like, these games are just unique too, John, where... You know, the, nothing counts from the past. That's just history. And the team that's prepared the best in the last two weeks and has prepared their best, their mindset and, and their tactical plan, and the team that executes that the best today from start to finish, they're the ones that will come out on top. So it really does, might give you a small bit of confidence that you've done well against Kilkenny before. But, you know, Kilkenny lads realise too that they can, they can turn the screw and they can win this game today as well. And if they're right, they will feel they have a right chance of beating Galway. And Galway lads know that too, that... You know, the Wexford game or whatever's gone in the past doesn't really count for much. No, you have to produce again today or else you're, out, you're more or less in the back door of the championship. So performance, it's all about that performance today and how much you can get out of yourself. Um, the team selection, uh, Taggy, so he's changed the midfield, Brian Cody. He's brought Richie Lahey and Conor Brown into for a new combination. Why do you think he's done that? Well, it's interesting, John, because actually them two midfielders played in the semi-final last year against Limerick. And that was the biggest upset of the championship last year. And Kilkenny came out hammers and tongs uh, to beat Limerick. And I think he's setting up the same way for Galway as well. I think Richie Lahey is a player that kind of goes forward. So he gives that kind of forward momentum, which will help out the forwards. And Conor Brown is a defensive midfielder. And he's more of a man marker. He marked Keen Lynch in the semi-final last year and did a very, very good job. So he could be in there to mark maybe the likes of Parig Mannion, or maybe, look, they talk about this middle third, Cotton Mannion, Joe Canning, Conor Cooney. They're all dropping back into midfield. So Conor Brown will bring that defensive attitude and Richie Lahey going forward for the overlap. And if you look at the half-forward line that Brian Cody picked, John Donnelly, Martin Keown and Walter Walsh, it's a workhorse of a half-forward line. John Donnelly, we put his body around the place. Mossy Keown, very good in the tackle. And Walter Walsh, is obviously a very good worker, but also a very good hurler, and expecting a big game out of him. So if you look at the, at the team selection on, on Brian Coy's apart, the half-back line of Killian Buckley, Parag Walsh, and Conor Fogarty is probably the best half-back line can Kenny have in a couple of years. And it's all about this middle third, and that's where the battle is going to be, and that's where he's going to want to stop Galway delivering perfect ball into the full forward line, because the full forward line for Galway is where it's going to be won and lost, I think. And if they're getting perfect ball, no matter what kind of defender you are, you're not going to be able to defend the likes of Conor Whelan and Brian Concannon when the ball gets put into your hand. So it's out the field and to stop the supply, that's what Brian Cody is aiming for. And um, from what I'm hearing from Taggy, Tony, this is going to be a physical match. Oh, I would expect uh, unbelievable battles in the first 20 minutes there in that middle third. And I think it'll be very low scoring for that first quarter where, you know, I say space will be at a premium, time in the ball will be at a premium. And I think Kilkenny and Morden Go will be trying to break down the play as much as possible, make it really ugly and slow maybe for Galway to deliver ball out of the fence and uh, really making a physical battle in the in the air and a lot of rough balls. So, you know, they'll ask a lot of questions of Galway in that first 20 minutes around the physicality. And I think, you know, the longer Galway can match that and stay in it, I think they have the better hurlers, but they have to bring that intensity in the first 20 minutes in particular to not allow Kilkenny get a foothold in the game. And, and, and I suppose bring their brand on the game and bring their terms on the game. If Dahi Burke is fit, do you play him, uh, uh, Tony? Yeah, 100%. And what I like about the goal with defence, you have a lot of adaptability, you know, with TJ possibly inside, you could have Dahi and Mark from there in a matchup. What a mouth-watering tie that is to be looking at. Garage Mack played full-back the last day and was excellent in there. He could be the matchup with Colin Fenley. Fintan Burke, who I've such high regard for as a defender, he can float anywhere in the back positions as well, and Shane Cooney the same. So there's a huge amount of flexibility and adaptability in that goal with defence. And, you know, I'd expect to see Dahi Burke in there. I know he's named, and I'd say he's trained the last couple of weeks. So he'd be a huge addition, and, and what a quality defender to call on. Yeah, and I think it's uh, true. If TJ Reid, Colin Fennelly, Owen Cody can get the breaks inside uh, Taggy, that's where Cook County can do their damage. 
Yeah, for sure. Look, there's a mix of pure class and pure determination in the forward line. TJ Reid and Cody and Colin Fennell are aiming the full forward line. But what Kilkenny are kind of doing that they haven't done before is their forwards are rotating. So TJ Reid obviously ended up full forward and corner forward against Dublin and kind of cut them on the hop. Now, Gobby will be aware of that. But it's very hard to mark that rotational kind of system. Colin Fennelly is a brilliant full forward, but it really does dictate on TJ and Colin. You know, they're very telepathic at this stage. And the Dahi Burke is interesting to see back. That would be some matchup to mark TJ Reid. Now, whether he follow them all around the field is a different story. Garo McInerney would be strong enough for Colin as well. But I think the likes of maybe an Owen Cody and a Walter Welch, maybe coming in underneath the radar, could be the trick um, today in, in in that forward line. But it's going to be it's going to be serious battling. But TJ Reid and Colin Finley have to be stopped. And if they are, can they be struggling to win this match? Uh, it's no longer the Joe Show, um, Tony. Like Brian Concanon, as Taggy was saying, there one for the last day. Connor Whelan is a super hurler. Um, they've got a range of of scoring opportunities now across that full forward line and half forward line oh, it was so encouraging the last day John to see the maturity I suppose in Brian Cannon's play I've probably experienced Brian a lot with the Fitzgibbon and NUIG the last four or five years and with Galway 21s and he's been a massively standout player in the county and you know he's got his chance the last number of years but he really showed a, a great bit of form the last day Connor Whelan has been outstanding the last number of years for Galway and is developing into a, a great leader in the team like Joe's game the last day I thought was excellent his work back into the half back line in midfield setting up the play winning puck outs chasing and hurrying back like he was a great example to the rest of the players and you know Cahill Mannion another uh, outstanding forward we have there at the moment he's able to go left and right he's able to run the ball he's able to create he's able to score so there's great kind of uh, leaders in the attack now and great different ways that go we can play and run the ball or play it short or play it through the lines and you know, lads are so flexible and adaptable. They can play any one of the six positions or out in the half hour lane or midfield area. And uh, that's why it's probably so hard to pin down where Gaul are going to get their scores from because there's such flexibility in the in the team at the moment and the play. Uh, is there a worry, Taggy, that Dublin cut 14 points off you the last day? Yeah, no, it is. Um, look, this is the conundrum with Kenny at the minute is what kind of form they're actually in. Like in the first 20, 25 minutes, they were absolutely awesome and they blew Dublin out of the water and then a, a complete collapse in the second half. But I put that down to a little bit of inexperience. I put it down to maybe playing in Crow Park with no crowd. I played in Crow Park with maybe 30,000 people there and you win it by 12 points. And your head does go into a practice match mentality at some times. And I think that's just the inexperience of the players. And I think Brian would have worked on that and he would have got into their heads that lads at 70 minutes and it's it's championship hurling. You can't be taking a foot off the gas. Now, they wear a coffin. When a team gets ahead of you like that with their tails up, it is very hard to pull them back. But I wouldn't be too worried about it. I just think it's a little bit of experience. I think it's a little bit of a crow park factor that was just kind of an empty game and they were leading by so much that they came back into it. Now, in saying that, they'd have to be on their toes full belt for, for Galway 70 minutes. And Galway is a different perspective. Kilkenny were probably going in as underdogs against Galway. So straight away, they're on their toes. They're ready for this battle. I think against Dublin, they thought maybe they're going to be favourites. And it is a different story as you're going into a match as a favourites. You know, sometimes you can get lackadaisical and you can take your mind off the game. Being an underdog is a different story. And for Kilkenny being an underdog, you know, they're a different animal. Uh, Clare leading Wexford by four points to two in the qualifiers at Amore Park. Uh, Cork by Tipperary at four. Joe McDonough Cup round three. Antrim 310, Kerry 1 6. Uh, the Ladies All Ireland Senior Championship, Donegal 2 11, um, Waterford three points. And the Camogie as well, we have uh, quarterfinals. Clare eight points, Cork 2 14. Speaking about Brian Cody there, Tony, what has Shane O'Neill brought in his first season with Galway? Uh, he seems to be a very level presence. I, I don't know a whole lot about him. I probably listened to him in a few interviews, but he seems to be very level-headed. He seems to be a really good communicator. I think he's kept a lot of the good structures and, and, and culture that's there from the last couple of years at Hall, And he's probably added his own flavour with his coaching team. I suppose I would have played with Fergal Healy and David Ford when I played with Galway. And, you know, they're two very innovative and creative coaches and they have a great rapport with the players. And, you know, they, they've definitely added a new dimension to Galway's style of play and the game plan. And uh, from all I'm hearing, it's a very happy camp and a camp that's really thriving well at the moment. And Shane has really helped with that, along with his backroom team. And, uh, you know, if they can deliver another big performance today, I think it'll give people a, a lot of hope for, for the season ahead.
Okay, before we get to the other games, how are we calling uh, this evening? 6.15 throwing in the Leinster final. Taggy, uh, Kilkenny Galway, who, why, and by how many? Yeah, <coughs> well, Tony kind of mentioned there, Galway are coming in as hot favourites. And as you've seen the last day, if you allow Galway to hurl, they'll strip, they'll strip you to pieces. You know, they're lovely hurlers. They're really nice when they're in full flow. But I think Rexford didn't really hit them at all the last day. And what I'd be hoping is that Kilkenny coming in off two Leinster final defeats already. This will be the third one if they lose this evening. Um, you know, having to be beaten to Galway for the last two championship matches. I just think Brian Cody has enough animation to kind of get it into their heads. And I think the match is more of a head thing. Whenever we play Galway, we always felt that we had the better mentality. And Tony, obviously, dealing with that side of things, maybe might know more about the Galway side of it. But I know from a Kilkenny point of view, mentality-wise, went a huge way, bringing intensity, hard work, the graft, the, the, the ruthlessness, and there is a Brian Cody factor there. He brings a rawness and a ruthlessness to that Kilkenny team. If there was any other manager over Kilkenny, I would say Kilkenny would be, be, be beaten this evening. But I think with Brian Cody, with the fact of the underdog tag, and that Galway, we've seen him playing lovely hurling, but when they really get hit, does the mentality drop and are they able for it? So I'm going for a Kilkenny win, provided that we win the battle and we bring it down to a dogfight. Are you going for a Galway win, Tony? Uh, I am, John, but with, uh, I suppose, a small bit of trepidation that, like, Kilkenny hit maybe 216 the last day against Dublin in the first half. And when you consider Limerick got maybe 323 in the full game the last day, you know, if Kilkenny can bring up their level of performance in the second half, I think they're going to be an unbelievable challenge. And, you know, I'd say that somewhere in the region of one to three points, whoever wins this game, you know, I wouldn't be surprised either way, but I, I give a, a hesitant vote to Galway, but they have to be mentally really right for this game and really ready to put on a, an even bigger performance than they did against Wexford, where they weren't really put under the pressure that they're going to see today in the first 20 minutes in particular. Yeah, we'll look forward to that later on, the Leinster hurling final. Cork and tip at four o'clock. This is knockout now. Um, Taggy, Seamus Callan in the last day didn't score at all, but if he does today, if he's back to his normal self, uh, Tipperary will have an advantage with, with that. Yeah, no, for sure. I think for Tipperary, a lot of the big names didn't perform. Your Brendan Mars, your Parag Mars, your Seamus Callan, your Norma McGrath. And I think these guys are in the game too long now to have too much experience just to let one game hinder their championship performance. So I think these guys will be coming back, going at more so the leaders on the team because they didn't perform the last day. So they'll, they'll, they'll drag the new lads through as well. Um, obviously, with the heavy ground in Limerick, I think uh, with the changes that are actually made, Dan McCormick coming in, Bonner Marr coming in, I think Liam Sheedy is really trying to put a physical edge to this Tipperary team. And I think with this year, this type of hurling, it's basically league hurling with a little bit more intensity. And I think you need to be physically strong, physically well able to move on the ground. Uh, and, um, you know, I think with Cork, Cork over the years haven't been a great league league side. They're more of a summer championship type of hurling. They love the low risky work. And I think Sheedy is bringing that physicality to tip to maybe bully Cork on um, uh, this evening. Uh, Cork, they're playing, what, a third uh, match in, his, in two weeks. Is that a positive or a negative, Tony, do you think? I think the matches are massively, like, training-wise this time of the year, John, you'd be only tipping away the week of games. So games are probably worth eight to ten training sessions. So I think it's, as much match practice players want, that's what gives you confidence and that's what brings you on. So, you know, that will be a help to Cork if they had an extra game or two. But, um, you know, I was really surprised with Tip the last day. Knowing a lot of the players, I think their pride will be hurt from it. You know, their lack of intensity and their lack of performance is very surprising by Aleem Sheedy and Aim O'Shea managed team. And, you know, I'm expecting a huge response from Tipperary this evening with the quality they have in their ranks and, you know, the, the mindset a lot of those players, they would feel that, you know, this is a big moment for them in their careers and, you know, they'd they, they love to answer that now with a big performance against Cork. Cork are a pacey team, Taggy. Um, all of their forwards scored the last day against the Dubs. Mark Coleman played well. But to me, they don't have the natural swagger that they once had, Cork, and there's always a question mark. Yeah, um, I think you're dead right, John. I think there's always a question mark with Cork. My feeling on Cork is... In the back line, they're, they're not they're not kind of stern enough, you know. They haven't got a John Gardner or, or a Rock to kind of really lead the ship at the back. And sometimes they're at sixes and sevens. As I said, when they get the space and when they get the nice dry ball, they're a beautiful team to watch. But beautiful teams this time of year 
don't really make it through the ranks. And, you know, I know they put Declan Dalton in there full forward stuff to kind of bulk it up. But really, their only dangerous talisman is Patrick Horgan. And, look, he's going to be on probably Cottle Barrett. And Cottle Barrett's probably one of the best man markers in the game at the minute. So he could be curtailed pretty quick. And I just think, as Tony said, I think there's too much pride in the guys from Tipperary, likes of the Mars and stuff. Because if they lose this game, there'll be question marks saying these guys are finished completely. And Tipperary won't want that. So I think it's going to be more of a physical dogged match and they have a lot to prove. And Tipperary had done this before. They were beaten in a Munster final last year when on the win there Ireland. They were beaten the first round championship a couple of years ago when on the win there Ireland. So they're well used to this and I think they're going to be a backlash from Tipperary. And they haven't won that, that back to back since 1965 in the All Ireland. Uh, Taggy's going for Tipperary. Are you the same? Tony, are you going for Tip? Yeah, I just think Cork are, are too up and down in, in their displays and you know some days they're on and some days they're off and there's a lack of intensity and a lack of physicality to their play. So, you know, I t just think there's more certainty around Tip and what you get from them and, and Cork have been just too inconsistent for me the last number of years. Uh -huh. Limerick against Waterford tomorrow, the Munster final. How would you break down this Limerick middle third, uh, Taggy? How would you combat that? Because the way Limerick are playing at the moment, they're the hot favourites for me. Yeah, they are the hot favourites. Um, look, I suppose I'd be looking back to the semi-final, but I think uh, last year, but I think Limerick have learned their lesson from the semi-final last year. They're caught in the hop. But all that Kenny did, and it was no major tactic, and you talk about tactics, and maybe it is an easy way to analyse games, but it's going to have to be a ferocious, ferocious work away from Watford, uh, half-back line and half-forward line and midfielders to upset Limerick. What you need to do to Limerick is to stop their game plan, as in get the little flicks, get the little hooks, get in their faces, get the little kind of ups, upset Limerick to the fact that they're uncomfortable playing. But on the flip side of that, I think Limerick have learned their lesson and they're more composed, they're more kind of um, happy in what they're kind of doing, kind of game plan um, type of a team now so that they're a little bit more mature. So for Watford to beat Limerick, it's going to come down to intensity and it's going to be intensity for 70 minutes, which I haven't seen Watford do in a long, long time. I think they're in a great position with Liam Cal. I think he's bringing something different to him. He's playing more of a kind of an orthodox type of a setup with 15 on 15. And, you know, with the Burke, Austin Gleeson, I think, has to play out centre forward, out toward midfield, so he can pop shots for long range. But it's going to have to be an intense battle from Waterford for the 70 minutes, and they're going to have to get goals as well to beat them. Uh, so how are you calling it, Taggy? I still go for Limerick. I think they're just on, a, on, on an absolute roaring um, pat at the minute. Uh, they have two league finals to their name. They're going for a second Munster Championship now tomorrow, so it's going to be very hard to stop them. And I can't see I can't see Watford come to grips of the intensity and the sharp shooting of Limerick that they will bring to it. So I'm going for Limerick. Well, we're speaking remotely here on Skype with uh, Taggy Fogarty and Tony O'Regan. I say, Tony, uh, you're, you're, you know the webinar is backwards now these days. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, just uh, listen, I, I'm running, I suppose, a webinar series there for the end of November, which just helping people, you know, there's been a drop in people's, I suppose, optimism, their life satisfaction. And, uh, you know, I really wanted to help people with that kind of anxiety and the pressure that they're feeling in life at the moment. So I'm putting on a webinar series to help with uh, performance skills around life and a professional career. And, uh, you know, if people want to check that up, it's on Eventbrite, and uh, I feel it'll be a very impactful couple of hours for people to sign up to. Okay, and Taggy, what are you up to these days? Um, very little, John, to be honest. I'm just, um, I'm working away, thank God. I'm on the road, so um, I'm supposed, I'm classed as an essential worker, but I'm not really an essential worker, so I do all, we do all the IT in the shops. So I'm on the road, I'm working away, I come home and even do a bit of workout, and then I basically chill out for the day. That's, that's, my, that's my week as, in a nutshell. OK, Taggy and Tony, thanks so much for speaking to us this afternoon and enjoy the game tonight. Thanks, thanks lads. OK, uh, Taggy Fogarty and Tony O'Gregan there looking ahead to the hurling uh, this afternoon and tomorrow. Let's check in with uh, Aaron Kernan at Breffney Park. How's it going? Are Donegal still well on top against Dermot? They are indeed. Uh, you join us. We're just back uh, in playing after the water break second half. Donegal still leading 116 to 6 points. Uh, from, from half time um, it's been three scores apiece um, but Donegal to be fair are their, their usual patient selves uh, Paddy McBrady has just come on as a sub um, first touch of the ball put it over the bar and he's just after drawing another simple free uh, straight in front of the goals here which you'd imagine Michael Murphy will, will tap over but um, Arma come out at the start of the second half bit more urgency in their play a um, couple of early frees from Ryan O'Neill and a 45 um, but
brought it back to 112 and not five. But um, Kieran Thompson, Brennan McBrady um, have chipped on a few scores here, and uh, they're, they're in full control. But surprisingly, um, from Declan Bonner. Um, one suppose it positive for, from them is Armagh seems to be dropping more men behind the ball and trying to, to come in waves of attack but uh, he's actually just he took off Paul Brennan their centre half back and put on Andrew McLean uh, who's a forward you know so he's still going for this game he's still pushing up he's still looking to attack um, and he, he's not they're not really sitting back you know and just inviting Armagh on to them which is a, is a huge positive from, from their mindset OK, thanks, Aaron. So, what, a 13-point lead, actually a 14-point lead now for Donegal. Donegal 117, Armagh 6 points. So, Donegal set for the Ulster football final.